no role plays, just real. Chris and Lorenzo share four decades of combined experience to help you become a more effective leader. We've never really, as a workforce, spent a lot of time on making sure we're developing good leaders. We'll be able to share stories, experience, mistakes, uh, failures, successes. This is Hacking Your Leadership. Welcome to Hacking Your Leadership. I'm Chris. And I'm Lorenzo. And Lorenzo, we are continuing with our discussion on leadership theories based on the Monday.com article that you uh, shared with us uh, over a month ago now. Um, this is part five of eight in the series. So if you if you haven't listened to the first four, please go back. Um, they are episodic, so you, you don't have to have them all in order. They're all they're all different theories, and they all kind of res- they'll resonate with you differently depending on what kind of leader you are. Um, but definitely go back and listen to those if you haven't had time to yet. On today's episode number five of eight, we're going to be talking about transactional leadership theory, and transactional leadership theory in general is exactly the opposite of our last episode last Monday, which was the transformational leadership theory, which is my favorite um, so far, because it's the one where I feel like I excel the most. And transactional leadership theory being exactly the opposite of that is one where I, I think I excel the least. It's a lot harder for me to lead in transactional leadership theory, but you may be surprised to learn that I also absolutely believe that it is an effective leadership um, way of, of leading a team for a lot of people, and and I do think it has a place in the world today, even though a lot of people might hear what it is and think, no, this this is going away. This is not, not the case anymore. Yeah, no, I agree. It's kind of one of those things that um, I think on the surface, people will be like, well, that's just not what people want. That's not what people need. And, um, you know, even like our our position in leadership is more one of like getting to know people and and helping to inspire and motivate them. But transactional leadership, as the article states by definition is is a system of reward and punishment. Uh, And and how that reads out is very simple. Like you get positive reinforcement and rewards for doing what you're supposed to be doing. um, And you get held accountable for not doing what you're supposed to be doing. And I think that, you know, this is more of when people would say, like, what's the difference between like maybe a leader and a manager? And that tends to get painted in this idea of leadership is good, you know, leader is good, manager is bad. Um, And what they're really kind of stating is like managers tend to be more in this transactional leadership theory around saying like, it's not as important to me to kind of get to know you, to understand all these types of things. What's important to me uh, in this in this theory is that I'm really clear about what you should be doing the expectations and I'm very clear about um, how you get recognized for doing it um, you know maybe even early or better than expected and I'm really clear about what the uh, you know what, what happens if you do not get this work done by this timeline or whatever the case is and there's a ton of industries um, that absolutely work in that space like I have friends that have done, marketing and like you know when i was in california for five years i had friends that that did everything from like building out movie posters and um, and and it was a creative thing but it was really really clear on like the deadlines and what ended up happening you have seven days to turn in your marketing artwork for this upcoming movie Um, on the seventh day we will look at it and we will even give it a thumbs up which means we will give you 10 percent of this contract and you'll have another seven days to refine it based upon our feedback um, or we'll give you the thumbs down and you get nothing and you can wait for the next time to play. And it was like very, very, very transactional. Like we don't care what your name is. We don't care about what you're trying to accomplish. Like, like it was just a very transactional thing. And so I use that as the example to say that, um, that, that worked, um, in a lot of those types of spaces and those that, that, that I knew that were in that space, they were just like, yeah, like I just, I've had to learn and I kind of have learned what, studios like and what I need to turn in but like if they don't like it I just move on to the next thing um, and then if they do I continue and then I get paid for my work and it was very transactional but they were totally fine with it um, and it worked well for them because they had full control over whatever they did with those seven days whether they did it for the first day and turned it in early or whether they spent half a day or a couple hours a day like whatever they wanted to do they had full control over their life they just knew that these were the deadlines and that this was the recognition and that this was the punishment is that we just won't take your work and you will not get paid um, until we find something that we that we find interesting right right I, I think where people get tripped up when it comes to this, is on on the surface, it feels very um, unemotional, right? And and that's because it is. It is very unemotional. It's it's very matter of fact. 
And, and, but what comes with that to, in order to, to be successful is there still has to be very, very clear communication about what the expectation is. And so it, it wouldn't have worked for your, your friends in marketing if on the day they turned it in, they said, oh yeah, no, you don't, you don't get anything now because we don't like it. And they'd never heard that before. It's like, well, wait a minute. I thought we get 10% after seven days. Like, yeah, only if we like it. Wait a minute. Wait, that doesn't seem fair anymore. Well, but, but if you know that going into it, if you know this is what the score is, either it resonates with you or it doesn't. And if it's not the right world for you, if this isn't the, the right thing for you, then you then you should move on and find something else to do. If enough people don't resonate with it to where the movie studio doesn't have enough people submitting artwork for things or whatever it is, then they have to change. But clearly, if the whatever the model is that they're doing keeps them being able to meet the deadlines they need to make because enough artists are meeting their deadlines, then there's really no incentive for that industry to change. Um, and that doesn't mean that it's a bad thing. It means that it's just, it is a thing. It, it's, it's not good or bad. Either, either it works for you as a person to be led this way, or it doesn't. I think where a lot of managers, and I say managers as opposed to leaders because of the, the, the difference between the two when it comes to transactional leadership theory, where a lot of managers get tripped up is they try to combine both and they fail at it. Meaning mm. they they it, they need to be leading from a transactional leadership theory standpoint, but they are reading books and listening to podcasts and hearing things about how people want to be led by but with relationships and they want to know that they have a relationship with their boss that they can talk to and 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 they bring the the transformational element of it in there and they fake the transition the 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 transformational element in order to be more effective at the transactional relationship they they already have and then they come off as disingenuous the leaders that i know that succeed at this are ones who they when, when they have to hold their one of their employees accountable it's very matter of fact there's no emotion and they absolutely truly move on after what they're done meaning they don't hold a grudge they don't look at the employee and like roll their eyes or scowl at them or make the employee feel like oh you messed up i've written you off in my book it's like no you you messed up and i held you accountable and it's on paper or whatever it is and now we go back to it like it never happened except that it's on paper so that if we have to call back on it again and 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 reference that because we have to move on to the next step then we will but if we don't need to do that, then I've truly moved on in my mind and, and we're, we're fine again. Like everything's good. If, if a leader does that really well, I think they can be very successful in transactional leadership theory, provided their employees are responding to it too. Yeah, no. And, and I think, again, I think that there are um, like there, we've talked about this before. If like a leader can be a good manager, right? Because right. I think even in the context of most leadership jobs, there are things that are very clear. Like these, these are yep. these are minimum expectations of a job that you have to do. And if you do that job well, here's the recognition you receive. And if you don't, here's the accountability that you'll have. That has to exist even in spaces of inspiration, motivation, and development. Like of you course. have to have that uh, because you have to have a baseline and you have to also make sure that like everybody is doing what they should be doing so that you can, you know, have the performance and the outcomes that allow you to have the bandwidth to 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 allow people to try different things and take on more responsibility. So like that has to exist in a lot of spaces. And I think to your point, it becomes difficult for a lot of leaders when they try to blend the two. Like, like I, I immediately think of other industries like like um, like the big office buildings and people that are kind of like, you know, reviewing paperwork like all day long. It's like do these things, have them done by this deadline. Yep. Right. And and actually in those spaces, any time away from doing that work um, is is not the greatest. Like it, you're you're causing there to be a delay. You're, you're potentially causing somebody to miss a deadline. Right. And so like you don't have all of that extra time to like build in some of the inspirational type of stuff. You have to schedule that out. You have to kind of block off where they would be productive or somewhere else. So like there's a lot of industries and spaces where a lot of people prefer that. They 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 would prefer to be able to walk in, clock in at eight or nine o'clock do exactly what I'm told, you know, sometimes get it done a little bit early and then enjoy the recognition of having the rest of the day off or taking an early day or whatever, uh, but then also being able to finish, clock out, go home, and I'm good. And and like and just let me go and just do the job that I'm responsible for doing. Um, a lot of people um, like that, appreciate that, and want that. And I think that as a leader, you've, you have to be attuned enough to your people 
to 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 respect that and to understand it um, and to allow them to be that person without this feeling like to your point about like holding grudges like a lot of times leaders will get frustrated by like I just don't know why they don't want more I just like I've tried to paint them this wonderful picture of like the work they can do and what they can have here and they're like I just want to come in and do my job and go home and they they have a hard time seeing that because the leader's projecting their own career ambitions onto somebody else and feeling like they have to show up and that's just not always the case and and it's okay and as long as you're doing good work um and you're you're at work and getting what's done as expected then like I got I have no issue with you at all that's perfectly fine and and you need people that 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 see the world that way and want to do that level of work because it's literally impossible to have every single person be in this development inspirational pro, you know progressive mode of of your attention and your time and your development right there there are examples that you see of this um in in real life where it happens, and we see them in in the entertainment industry. Like we see them in movies and, and in TV shows, and and they, they might be caricatures of it. Meaning they might exaggerate this a little bit, but I think it really does happen in a, in a lot of places still. Which is being able to have both types of relationships with a person based on how you are with them or who, who you are with them as like a, a boss slash employee. And then, and then are you friends with that person also? And so I look at, uh, you see movies, um, and you might even uh, have some experience with this, you know, growing up in Michigan with all of the, um, the auto worker unions, you see all these things where it's like you, you come in and you, you have to turn this, this bolt on this car on the assembly line for eight hours. And if you don't do it, then you get called into the office and the person writes you up and says, you didn't do this well enough. And, and you write, sign the paper and you might get mad but then after you clock out you both go and sit at the same bar and have a beer together and and you don't even think about the work it's just the the friendship is there and it's completely unrelated um we, we see it in um in like a legal shows where it's like you have like the prosecutor and the defense attorney and they're yelling at each other in court and they're trying to like you know make each other look like idiots in front of the judge or whatever and then when when the case is over and it's and it's all said and done they go and they have dinner together and they just talk and it, like like it never even happened and and some people can watch that and go how how can they sit at the same table and be friends with each other when they were just doing this in the courtroom it's like well you, you, this is two different environments one is a very transactional environment it, you you have a job to do whether it's you're, you're representing your client or representing the the state and and you have to fight tooth and nail to do the best you can but then you literally almost like flip a switch to being back to what is the relationship i have with this person independent of this job I think that's becoming harder and harder for a lot of people to do or to, or to see how that could possibly, how those two worlds can coexist. But I think for a lot of people, not only does it do they coexist, but it's where they're the most comfortable is knowing that there's that separation and that there's that, that kind of divide between what happens when I'm at work versus what happens when I am not at work. Yeah, no, I think it's a great point. And I even think of like in the sports world where you see that quite a bit where you, you have this level of competition and, mm-hmm. and, you know, you go at it and you're trying to win and there's a lot of blood, sweat, and tears that happen in the game. Um, and then typically, not all the time, but most of the time, good sportsmanship is the game's over. Yep. And then you hug it out and it's all good and you appreciate one another. And then maybe you go and hang out in the summer, work out together and play ball. Like, you, it's just like, that's the type of situation where you might point, be on like, the same team eventually. Depending yeah, on, exactly. Like, on professional sports, you just never know. Yeah, it's very transactional um, in that space. And then there's not any, you know, uh, they can walk away from it and it can be it can be a, a greater relationship. But I think that that's the... That's the the part with leadership that um, – well, let me ask you this. Have you ever had an employee or somebody that you work with where it's frustrated you because they want it to be transactional and you prefer it to be transformational? Yeah, I mean that, that happens all the time because I am better at the transformational than I am at the, tra- the transactional. <laughs> so when, a, when an employee wants that kind of relationship, that, that transactional type of relationship, it just it just, just feels very – it, I mean, f- you know, for lack of a better word, it feels very transactional to me. <laughs> um, yeah. and, and that doesn't resonate with me as much, meaning the way I want to be treated is not with a, with transactional relationships, meaning when a leader approaches me in a very transactional way, I tend to get I, – I tend to not react well to that, meaning I want there to be a relationship because I believe that trust, mutual trust, it stems from having that relationship. And, and – are there parts of the job, whatever it is, that need to be transactional? Sure, and I'm and I'm I'm not you know naive to that, but if if in general the relationship seems very transactional, um, I find it very hard to really 
give it my all. Actually, that's not true. I can give my all, but I can't give more than my all, you know, like you, where you go above and beyond what the job requirement is when, when you when you take that extra the extra steps that would be, you know, kind of that kind of live in the in the world of, of con- being conscientious, um, thinking, thinking eight steps ahead about, you know, what, how, how could I make this person's life easier as opposed to how can I just get the job done? Really difficult for me to to live in that space if it's a very transactional relationship. But it's also very difficult for me to turn that off, meaning what will happen is I'll find myself actually going above and beyond and then resenting the person that I did that, <laughs> that I went above and beyond for someone who only sees this as, as a transactional relationship. So, yeah, this is a this is a tough one for me. And I definitely play better when I have a um, when I can be a transformational leader and when I am working for transformational leaders. Absolutely. And with that, it brings us to this episode's one minute hack. But first, a few words from our sponsors. The One Minute Hack. All right, for this episode's One Minute Hack, here's what I want you to do. I want you to think about the people who report to you and kind of divide them up into two categories between the the employees who you think resonate more with a a transformational type of leadership versus employees who resonate more with the transactional type of leadership. Look at the ones that resonate more with a transactional type of leadership and and look at their performance. Is it it good or, or is it poor? If it's poor, I want you to think about how much clarity you give to them when it comes to the system of rewards and punishments or accountability for job performance. Are are you very clear on it? Do you sit down and have regular conversations with them about what to expect, about what will happen if they do well, about what will happen if they don't do well? If you're not having those regular conversations and this is an employee who really you know, kind of resonates more with a transactional type of leadership. They they want the the transaction more so than the relationship. Then then you're doing that employee a disservice by not giving them what they need. And and you'll be amazed at how much better they will perform if you just acknowledge the fact that maybe they're not looking to have a relationship with you. They're looking to have a working relationship that is based on clarity and that they get trust out of knowing that you're going to be clear and that the what words you tell them are going to be followed up with actions actions they can expect because they know what their performance was. Do, do those kind of things for those people, and uh, you'll be surprised at how quickly their, their performance turns around um, if, uh, if if the trying to build a relationship with them just doesn't seem to be working. Yeah, I think it's a great one-minute hack. And just a reminder that you know within leadership, like showing up for uh, for people in the way in which we they need us to, um, I think is something we should always consider. And to your point earlier in the show, like that can be difficult for us, like as leaders that maybe see leadership in the space of transformational and 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 heavily involved and you know um, emotional equity and things that you do. Um, sometimes just saying like, well, let me just basically read the rules of engagement here. Right. Of do this and you're good. Do this and it's bad. Uh, can feel very dry and it can feel very not inspiring. Um, but for people that um, are, are in that space or for industries that require that level of clarity, um, I think it's really helpful to provide people with that and make sure that they have exactly what they need to be successful. And then if you have the people that step out and say like, hey, I'm I'm getting my kudos and my recognition uh, quite frequently and I'd like more, um, then you can show up for them as the transformational leader that still allows them to play within those rule sets but gives them more responsibility um, to help build upon skill. Right. I think this is also just really a – one of the the clearest elements so far in in this series where you have two different styles who are who are really at, at polar opposite ends of each other and i i can't imagine a team anywhere that has you know say at least 10 people where you don't have some who are clearly one of these and clearly the other one of these the, there's there's just no way that you can get a team of people that are all one or all, or all the other in most cases. Uh, and so even if you, like most leaders or probably all leaders, gravitate towards one of these or the other a lot better than they do, you know, the opposite one. Um, so even if you are not great at the at the opposite one, if you're great at one and not good at the other, it will really behoove you to figure out what it looks like to be good at the other because I, I think you'll get a lot more performance out of your team and, and you'll be meeting them where they want you to meet them as opposed to expecting them to meet you where you are. Yeah, I think it's a great call. And with that, it brings us to the end of this episode. This is Hacking Your Leadership. I'm Lorenzo. And I'm Chris. And we'll talk to you all next time.